Next, uh, upcoming board meetings. Uh, June 12, 2017, regular meeting, Mentor Elementary at 7 p.m. July 10, 2017, regular meeting at Mentor Elementary at 7 p.m. And August 14, 2017, regular meeting, Mentor Elementary at 7 p.m. Um, I'd like to announce that Builders Trades Open House will be on Sunday, May 21st, from 1 to 4 at, uh, it's next to the uh, uh, Little League Dining Room, Menton Euclid up at Menton. But they've uh, remodeled the house this year and they've uh, done a real nice job on it. So invite you to come and, and uh, see the open house. Alternative Education Program Graduation will be Thursday, May 18th at 10 o'clock at the Ber Burkett Education Center. And then we have TV uh, High School Graduation Sunday, June 4th with the Bachelorette starting at 2 p.m. and commencement at 2.45 p.m. So we welcome all of you to attend that. Next we have Spotlight on the Ballot. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, in a little bit, we work with the asked to approve some new employees. Uh, do we have any of those folks here this evening that are to be approved tonight as new employees in the school corporation? And so would like to, to welcome you and introduce you. Okay. Looks like not. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, Mrs. Mills, I believe that you have a number of students you'd like to recognize tonight. So we'll turn this over to the program over to you. that I've asked to come tonight. In the first one, you did hear singing tonight, and that's our uh, Circle of State with song. And our representative for that is our music teacher, and that is um, Mrs. Uh, Baxter. She's our representative for that. And I'm gonna announce the kids' names. Um, if your name is called, please come down. We have Landon Durkis, Erica Henderson, Kyler Johnson, Jalen Johnston, Eli Love, Chesney Miller, Kaylee Miller, Sydney Mills, Porter Rich, Gabe Ruiz, Jordan Shoemaker, Maddie Smith, and Corinne Whitworth. And these students, this is, uh, Circle of the State with Song is a statewide children's uh, choral festival, and it's created and sponsored by the Indiana Music Education or Educators Association. Participants in each of the 12 designated areas of the state are chosen by their music teachers to be members of this select choir. An elementary choir and a middle school choir representing each area is chosen. With the help of their music teacher, Mrs. Baxters, singers from Akron Elementary School began preparing the music about two months in advance. The students performed at the Honeywell Center in Wabash in February. And if you ever get a chance to go to this concert, even if you don't have a child in there, please do. It's an amazing concert. It's an all-day event for the kids. The parents go uh, later in the day to hear the concert. But these guys leave super early in the morning, and it's about eight hours. Yeah, it's a long day and they practice with the other kids from all over the schools and come together and it sounds like they've practiced forever together and they did a really nice job really pleased with uh, this choir mrs baxter works with them at the very end of the day um, to work on their songs and their music that they will perform thank you guys congratulations and thank you for representing Akron. Um, it's Jenna Prater. These are our third graders. Jenna Prater, Macy Parker, Dallas Martin, Christian Guzman, um, Andres Rosas, Betty Shepard, Olivia Buther, Wes Parker, and Anna Sturt. Our fourth graders are Taylor McGriff, Sarah Finney, Thad Shambaugh, Kerrigan Callahan, Ava Neer, Gage Whetstone, Avery Wagner, Ella Sandbacken, and Colton Seney. 
And our fifth graders, Sydney Mills, Alondra Ramirez, Jimena Ruiz, Isaac Ramsey, Valerie Garcia, Andrew Gerkis, Anaïe Ramirez, Bobby Burke, Maddie Smith, and Allie Vera. Our sponsors for our student council are Ms. Sydney Reed and Mr. Ryan Adams. And under the leadership of our sponsors, Ms. Sydney Reed and Mr. Ryan Adams, the Akron Student Council has been selected by the Indiana Association of Student Council and the IASC Honor Council. I think, have we found that out yet? If this will be the 19th year if we get to Honor Council and they have worked hard and I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be um, the, on the 19th year as an Honor Council. Honor Council recognition is bestowed on student councils that demonstrate a commitment to all students through hard work, leadership, and commitment of the school community. These guys work super hard during the school year. I'm so proud of them. We had our Riley event, which lasted two full weeks this year, and they raised over $2,500. What was your final? That was around right at $2,500. That's the most we have raised. We were able to send that down um, to Riley, and also they raised that so that their principal could get a pie in the face, and they were glad to do that. So they do lots of great work, and I'm very pleased with them and the leadership that they have in our school. This year, um, we have four students going to leadership camp, five students going to leadership camp at Manchester University, and that's the most we have sent. Last year, we had three. Um, and this year we're sending five. So they'll go for a few days to Manchester University and learn leadership skills to bring back to our school as fifth graders. So great job, student council. The next group I want to recognize is a new group to our school and it's our robotics team. This is the first year ever that we have had a robotics team and what a great time they have had. When I call your name, please come up here. It's Carson Parker, Landon Durkis, Giovanni Araga, Zoe Miller, Maddie Smith, Kaylin Miller, Anai Ramirez, and Valerie Garcia. And their sponsors are Mrs. Miranda Feigert and Mr. Ryan Adams. <coughs> the AK Robotics Team is what they called themselves designed to build a robot to compete in the 2016-17 VEX IQ Challenge, and it's a crossover game. And the team attended two competitions, one in Noblesville, and they placed 14 out of 26, and then um, at Maconaqua, and they placed 19 out of 23, so pretty good for their first year ever. The competitions consist of multiple 60-second rounds where teams are paired and work together to score the most points possible. Our team also had members compete in the driver skill challenge in both events. So it was very neat to watch them build their robots from the ground up with their VEX kids. This started out as part of our Project Lead the Way um, science curriculum that we started this year in the STEM, and they decided Mrs. Feiger teaches that, and she applied for a grant to be part of this robotics club and got that. And so we took a team for the first time ever to compete. And we're hoping next year a few more competitions and we can get the maps that they need to learn to drive on and a lot of more equipment. But these guys will be, these are all fifth graders, so they're moving on uh, to the middle school and hopefully get that robotics team uh, really going at the middle school next year. Great job, robotics. Our next team being recognized is our Spell Bowl team. Um, the students for Spell Bowl, um, you can come down when I talk, call your name. Bobby Burke, Lily Doss, Genevieve Heller, Mercedes Herrera, Johnny Hill, Anai Ramirez, Evelyn Ramirez, Julian Rosas, Elise Smith, Marcus Smith, Devin Thorpe, Avery Wagner, and Kendra Wright. And they are sponsored, and their coach is Mrs. Hillary Parker. The Hoosier Spell Bowl team is one of Akron Elementary's two academic teams for students in grades four and five. This is Akron Elementary's 24th team to participate in the annual Hoosier Spell Bowl. And they went to competition this year. Um, it was in back in November. That's been a 
Wow. Um, at the Wabash Middle School, and they did uh, really well. What we end up placing third in our division, and they work real hard. If you ever see a list of those spelling words, wow, they are amazing. I, I, I don't know how they do it. They had a um, great time, though, working hard for Mrs. Parker, and they do real well. And again, this is for our fourth and fifth graders. Great job, Spellman. what they need to work on 
in their classrooms in math, and it goes right along with their curriculum. Before, we would take an assessment, and it might not match up completely with our curriculum, and this does. And also, the students can come and get on the computer. They all have their logon information. They can come and go on the computers um, for intervention and work at their level and help their um, grades and help the understanding of math come up. Parents, you also can pull this up at home and have your students working at home. So that's a great way to still get math. We get reading in very easily. You can go to the town library during the summer. But this is a great way to bring math into your home over the summer. And if you need your child's logon information, just contact their teacher and they have that. But the kids should also know because they log in all the time. And we do this math intervention in the mornings before school starts with a lot of our kids that are dropped off early or get off the bus early. Instead of sitting all of them in the hallways, we do a rotation in our computer lab where they're working on math in the mornings, and that's how Akron does it here. And then, then it's broken down by grade level, and you can see um, the students, like at kindergarten, it gives you a percentage of the green, how many are um, at or above grade level, and the uh, yellow shows that they're just one below, and they don't have any red at the end of the year. And then you can just see the grade levels, K through five for that. The next slide shows um, the reading. We also do this in reading. And um, the same type of um, data showing here, 71% um, of our students are on or above grade level in reading. And then our two tier where they're in a, a little bit more intervention and then the tier three is in more intense intervention. And, we, and it'll show us specifically um, on our data piece, we can click on there and know exactly what students they are and what skills they're lacking so that we can really hit those skills hard. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea. The next slide shows um, what our teachers can use in math to really show the breakdown. So this is kindergarten. So a kindergarten teacher can look at this and they can say, okay, um, my students are struggling in number and operations and how can we help them in that area? So it gives them what, what their class is doing well on or what they need to really work some more on and push that. These, uh, when you click on this stuff, my teachers really can dig in and see individual children and know exactly what to give each child. And this all goes through each grade. Um, K through five. And we also have that for reading too. But we're real excited about this. Like I said, it's our first year. We've had a lot of professional development on this. Um, uh, I ready test and how to read the data and interpret it. And we're hoping then next year um, the company wants to come back in and do more PD with us in our second year so that we can even help our kids more and what to do to help them. Um, this test, like this is our first year, so we have no comparison. So we're hoping that when we get our ISTEP data back, that will show some improvement because this company and this test really has our children dig deep and they have to have that in-depth, depth of knowledge question, uh, answers and they have questions that really make our kids think. They just don't put down an answer. They have to tell us why, why they get the answer and how they get that answer. And that's what we're looking for is that thinking skill. And this is a great uh, test and curriculum for that. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mills, and I would congratulate the students, but most of them are on their way, so we appreciate them being here tonight. Uh, we'd like next on uh, Spotlight uh, on the Valley to recognize Timothy Valley High School language arts teacher Shelly Engel. And let's see, where are we, Shelly? Come on up here, Shelly. Um, in late March, Shelly completed her doctorate degree in elementary education with a focus on reading from Ball State University. Uh, that, for a classroom teacher in our corporation, is a rarity. In fact, I don't know that we've ever had before uh, a classroom teacher with a doctorate degree. So, 
think that speaks very highly of uh, Mrs. Engel's motivation to uh, refine her craft. And when I told her that we'd like to honor her this evening, I think she was a little bit, uh, I don't know if I want to say embarrassed, but didn't feel like maybe she was deserving of that. But she said if we would allow her the opportunity to talk about how she used that to improve instruction and, and conduct research and those kinds of things, that she would gladly do that. So, Michelle, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you, and, and we do congratulate you. And uh, tell us, tell us a little bit more. Well, there's a reason most classroom teachers don't get a doctorate. Um, it's a five-year process. Um, it was a five-year process for me. They give you seven, thank God. Um, I got it done in five. Um, the intervention I, I went through a doctorate program is. Well, it used to be when I started, it was 90 credit hours, and then I found out about a week before I was done that they switched it to 92, and um, I had 94 qualifying hours, thank goodness, I mean, because I, I, if I went home and told my husband I had to take another class, he probably would have flipped a little bit, so um, 10 hours of dissertation, and I did a research study at Tukutu Valley Schools, um, high school, um, in a language arts class, ninth grade language arts, I did a pre-post intervention, and really, you know, my background is different. I have an elementary background. Um, you know, I got my start here, um, Mr. Connolly, Mrs. Mills. Um, and I went to the high school about three years ago. And one thing that I noticed when I was at the elementary, kids loved to read. And you could never give kids enough reading time. And when I got to the high school, I knew a lot of those same kids. I was their fourth grade teacher. I was their fifth grade teacher. And they had lost the love of reading. And I thought, what happened to your love of reading? And they're like, well, you know, things get in the way. You know, they're teenagers. They aren't sitting at home on Friday night reading books for fun anymore. And, um, and so I really started asking them some questions. And it's not that they didn't like to read anymore, but they thought maybe they weren't as good at it as they had been at the elementary. And I thought, well, why aren't you good at it? Your Lexile says you're good at it. Your standardized testing says you're good at it. I can sit and have a conversation with you. And in that conversation, I figure out that you're still really good at it, but why don't you think you're good at it? And they said, well, you know, uh, my grades or this or that, or I read a textbook, it's hard. Uh, so I really started doing some digging. And that's when you don't believe in your ability for an item, it's called your self-efficacy. A lot of our high school students do not have reading self-efficacy, a high level of reading self-efficacy. They don't believe in their abilities. Most of them have the abilities, they're more than capable, they just don't believe in them. So I conducted an intervention. I had two different types of teaching reading. One is a simple, uh, a single strategy. You teach them one strategy, and you teach them that strategy, and work with it until they're really, really good at it. And then you teach them another one. Um, and then there's another method, it's called transactional strategy instruction, where you approach the reading process as a before, during, and after reading. Before reading the preview, you question your reading for the main idea, you know, I won't bore you guys with all this, but it's a very specific type of process and it focuses on the reading as a whole. And I wanted to see two things. My research questions, I had two of them, which is what took a little extra long as well. But the first question was, which method is better for improving reading comprehension? And guess what? Both methods showed an increase in reading comprehension. Transactional showed a larger or more significant increase. But what I was really interested in was their self-efficacy. And no matter what type of intervention you provided for kids, they, if they knew they were focusing on improving their comprehension, and in their mind they know they're working on becoming a better reader, they felt like they were better readers. So one thing that we're really working with at the high school in our language arts classes is, you know, reading, learning to read is not something that ever stops. You might not be cognizant that you're learning to read. You know, if I were to pick up an integrated physics book, guess what, I've got to learn to read that book. Um, you know, so you don't always realize that you're learning to read. So if you have call attention to high school students learning to read, they feel better about that ability and their self-efficacy picks up. And when self-efficacy increases, reading ability increases. So um, I teach 10th grade primarily, with, and they take the standardized test, the I-STEP test for graduation, and you know that's pretty important. You know they feel good about themselves sitting down to take it. So you know that's five years worth of work in a nutshell. I won't speak anymore. I will. You know, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I throw a lot of jargon around. I think that's what a P 
PhD requires you to do, we throw a lot of jargon around, but. Well, the bottom line is it takes a lot of work and also has benefited our high school students tremendously. So uh, thank you very much, Shelley. Congratulations. We appreciate your, your hard work and dedication. Well, we're featuring the Engel family tonight. <laughs> and as you know, we have two student representatives that sit in with the board at each of the board meetings. Uh, each year we bring on a new junior, and uh, they serve for two years. That means that this time of the year we have a senior that's going to be leaving us, and it's Jonathan Engel. So Jonathan, why don't you come on over here, and we'd like to first of all congratulate you and thank you for your faithfulness in in represent, or representing the students here with the board. Um, normally we would present Jonathan with a pen and pencil set, and uh, we've ordered that, but it has been delayed in getting here, so as soon as it arrives, we're going to make sure he gets that. Um, Jonathan, can you tell us a little bit maybe about your, your two years of experience with the board, and then tell us a little bit about what you've got to plan for the future? diploma, not my doctorate, so sorry to disappoint you guys. Not yet. <laughs> not yet, all right. Um, I, I just want to start off by uh, saying thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and sit on uh, board as the high school representative. It's been a great two years. It's, it's, uh, it's been a big learning experience. I got to learn the ins and outs of what you guys do and uh, how important um, it is to have people sitting here that uh, really value um, what our school is doing. Um, at all levels, um, I, I don't even know where to, being in this position has allowed me to go and teach some of my fellow classmates a little more that it's not just starting at 8.25 in the morning and leaving at 3.30. There's a whole lot of work that goes into it, and um, I think a lot of them got to learn a little bit of that as well. Um, I don't know, any other points that I should talk about? <laughs> <laughs> My plans, there we go. I, I have plans, right? Every high school senior should. Um, this fall I will be attending Grace College. Um, going to go into business management with a minor in finance. Hoping to get into the investment banking game. We'll see how that goes. You never know where God's going to take you in life. Um, I have a feeling He's going to give me a rude awakening and put me right where I need to be. So I'm just waiting for that day to come and uh, looking forward to it. You know, one of our core values at Timothy Valley is leadership. And this is an excellent opportunity for young people to develop their leadership skills. You know, Jonathan, uh, from the time he joined us as a junior until now as a senior, we've seen a lot of growth in him. We're very proud of him, and, and I know that uh, he's a very hardworking young man, pretty focused, and I think he's going to do some great things. So I wish you the best, Jonathan, and thank you for representing your, your, your students and body at Tibby Valley High School. And then uh, Cheyenne, next year you're going to be the senior, so your turn to step up. But, uh, we appreciate Cheyenne Old Father as well. Cheyenne represents the junior class. Okay. We have tonight four retiring teachers that we would like to recognize and honor for their service to the Timothy Valley School Corporation. And uh, I'm going to start out with the first one here. I've got some information that I'd like to read aloud, and we'll have, uh, first of all, Brenda Van Lanningham come forward, and I know. Mr. Hoffman has something to present to you. Uh, Brenda Van Landingham is a kindergarten teacher at Mentone Elementary School. She's putting an end to a teaching career of 37 and a half years, 28 and a half years into New Valley. She graduated from Purdue University in 1977 with a degree in elementary education and enforcement in preschool. The week after graduation, she followed her husband, Terry, to Minnesota and taught for a half year at a Montessori preschool. Then they moved to Iowa where she taught third grade for the remainder of the school year. The 
couple then decided to move back to Indiana, where she taught for seven years in Syracuse. In 1987, she was hired to teach kindergarten at New Paris Elementary, and was there for one and one half years. She then moved to Mentone in December of 1988 and started subbing for Tippecanoe Valley. Brenda was hired on at Burkett in 1989 and moved to Mentone Elementary in 1990. She began in first grade and moved to kindergarten 13 years ago. Her favorite part of the job was watching the children grow. Teaching is in the lower grades, the growth from the beginning of the year to the end of the year is tremendous. Watching children learn to read and discovering that they can actually read a book is something I never tired of witnessing. The first time they count all the way to 100 was priceless, she said. She will miss the day-to-day -day interaction with kids and working with teachers at Mentone Elementary. Brenda calls the school all the way from home and will miss everything. She says, I could not have asked for more from the kind, caring fellow teachers here. Thank you is not enough for this great group of colleagues. Van Lanningham is looking forward to being a full-time grandma and getting to go to more sporting events, grandparent days, and just being available when needed. She doesn't have any immediate plans for retirement yet. It says she will likely help out her husband's business. She also would like to take more mission trips in the future. Teaching the children there is a very rewarding, blessing experience. So I guess once a teacher, always a teacher. Just maybe in a different capacity in a different country. Working at Mental Elementary has been a privilege and is very and she is very grateful for being given the opportunity. Thank you seems not enough or adequate to express about how I feel about Mental. She also credits her husband and children for allowing her to be the best teacher she could be and supporting her throughout her career. For the man like Oh, 
Okay, if you'd like to. At this time, honor Lois Buss, a language teacher to New Mallet High School. <coughs> Lois Buss spent 37 of her 39 year teaching career at Timothy New Mallet High School. After graduating from Indiana University, she taught French for one year at Plymouth High School. She went on to teach French and English at Town Crest Junior High School in Goshen the following year. We finally planned, planted ourselves in the Valley community in order to be close, in close proximity to both of our families. I began teaching at TBHS in August 1980. In addition to teaching French, Spanish, and English in the classroom, Mrs. Buss has worn many extracurricular hats, including Charity Coach, Sunshine Society, French Club, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and Junior Class Sponsor. The most rewarding aspect of teaching, she says, is being in the presence of youth, hope, and the future every day. She calls it an enormous gift and blessing to have known the hundreds of students that have sat in the classroom over the years. They've kept my heart and mind young, with creativity, motivation, and I can't pronounce this unless it's in French, so it's... Okay. Which means exuberant enjoyment of life, enjoyment of life daily. The greatest reward I have is living with purpose and passion in a profession where I have the opportunity to make a difference in the world. Teaching allows me to impact the lives of young people and even to sometimes save them, she said. Mrs. Bussett has been very rewarding to see her students go from a small high school in Indiana to go on and quite literally serve the world in Africa, Europe, and the Americas in such amazing ways. I will miss my classroom because it's holy ground, a place where I've worked with God across many years. It's a place where I've learned so much more than I've taught. It's a place filled with the investment of time, money, energy, and love. I've seen and lived much struggle, failure, victory, and miracles there. But of course, I will most miss the people. My treasure from this teaching career is the relationships built across the decades that continue to enrich my life. Mrs. Bell said she's very excited to have recently acquired the title of Nana and will be traveling the mission Michigan often at the time of the first granddaughter. She will also begin teaching French class part-time at Grace College this fall. Lois Buss. Successful career from 
some of the skills, knowledge, and advice that they may have gained from the industrial technology classes they took at Tiffany Valley High School. He will miss all the people at Tiffany Valley most, he says. I've worked with a lot of great people, from administrators to students, during my time here. I hope that I will never forget all the good times I've had, from the classroom to the field. Tiffany Valley's been a great place to teach and coach all these years. Idle is hoping to still be able to use his skills for a while longer. He loves the computer drafting and robotics aspects of what he taught for the past decade or so. He also hopes to spend more time with his family during retirement. I hope to be able to consider myself a Tiffany Valley Viking for life. Doug Knight. Deeper beeping than when I was doing it. Well, yeah. the items from the visitors that I don't believe. Any visitors other than 
in uh, the news. So, uh, on to approval of the consent agenda. Um, number one, we'll approve the minutes of April 12, 2017 executive session. Two, approve minutes of April 17, 2017 regular meeting. Three, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Noah Prater, Summer Technology Technician at the School Corporation. Isaiah Brown, Summer Technology Technician at the School Corporation. Tyler Kraft, Summer Technician for the School Corporation also. Number four, approve the following extracurricular assignments. Mike Biddle, eighth grade health or head football coach for the middle school. Ryan Prater, eighth grade assistant football coach, middle school. Tyler Kirby, yes. eighth grade assistant football coach, the middle school. Phil Prater, seventh grade head football coach, middle school. Corey Fields, 7th grade assistant football coach, middle school. Ethan Brumball, 7th grade assistant football coach, middle school. And Chris Fuller, 7th and 8th grade assistant football coach for the middle school. Number five, accept the following resignations of the following personnel. Todd Folk, JV girls basketball coach for the high school. Sarah Shepard, Instructional Assistant, Mentone Elementary. Martina Reed, Instructional Assistant, Mentone Elementary. Jennifer McQuinn, Instructional Assistant for the Middle School. Brandon Brown, Instructional Assistant for the High School. And Kelly Bradley, Instructional Assistant for the High School. Number six, approve 2017-18 lunch prices. And number seven, approve overnight trip to Munciana Volleyball Facility for the TBS High School Volleyball Team. Is there anything there that uh, you fellows want to pull out and talk about, or are we ready for a motion? I'll make a motion to type it, Stan uh, makes a motion to approve one through seven. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Todd. Uh, Brian's got, uh, or has given us a second. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. On to approval of claims and payroll. Okay, thank you, Todd. We have one pre-written claim listing this evening. It's dated April 30th, 2017, in the amount of 727000 $822.60. Our regular claim <coughs> listing is dated May 7, 2017, in the amount of $85,892.24. We also have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated April 14, 2017, and it's for the amount of $414,923.23. And the second is dated April 28, 2017, in the amount of $370,332.54. And I submit these claims to payroll for your approval. Do I have a motion to accept the claims and payroll as read? I'll make that motion, Todd. Aaron makes motion. Do I have a second? I'll make that second. Brian makes a second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Nose. We're good to go. Okay. Um, on to uh, the financial report. Okay. You have the reconciled bank statement and the monthly financial report of funds for the month of April 2017. In summary, our receipts and our disbursements for April 2017 are uh, the total receipts for all funds, $1,491,207.07. The total disbursements for all funds, $1,601,210.80. Okay. We'll go on to old business. Uh, it, uh, 
the first item of whole business would be an update on the Akron Elementary School project. So, is that, is that yours tonight, Frank? That's mine tonight. Well, I walked the board through before their meeting started today, so they've kind of been caught up to speed. But um, since last time we met, we've had a lot of changes. So basically, the entire exterior of the main building has been completed. Um, all the roofing's done, brick precast. Um, the main classroom area, which is area D, all the drywall's been completed. We've got paint completed in there, and we're also doing ceiling work in there. Um, area B, the gym area, we've done all the painting in there, primer, first coat of paint, so it's ready for ceilings everywhere. Area C, which is the main office area, we've completed the framing in there, and we're actually in the process of doing all the drywall work in there. So next couple weeks, month going forward, um, we started flooring today in the classroom areas. So by the end, by the next meeting, we'll have all of area D flooring done, hopefully. Um, we're moving in casework as we speak. So we've started casework in the classroom areas. Um, final coat of paint's going on everywhere that we can. Ceiling's going in. Um, Getting ready to start moving in kitchen equipment, hopefully sometime towards the end of the month. So, um, a lot of finishes going on. So we're still that two weeks behind our schedule. But like I was talked to the board beforehand, that furniture set to come in July 10th. So there's no issues having the building done before foreign furniture gets here. So moving line right along. So that picture is a little hard to see. With all the oh yeah. So. I'll take claim to this. So I kind of redesigned. This is a steel beam that we did. All the kids signed um, in October, I think it was. Yeah, October of last year. All the kids and staff signed that. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. So it's going to be visible. I know it's kind of hard to see in here, but that's kind of a view from the gym looking on top of the stage. So it's going to be finished, drywalled out. So you'll actually see that will be looks better in person. Than it is. So, yeah. Yeah. so exterior doors going in everywhere. Um, working on exterior concrete right now, so um, changing every week. So, any questions? Uh, good tour, I think it was. I think they enjoyed the tour. Hard seeing pictures every time. So, that's great. Thank you very much, Brandon. The uh, Next item of old business, there is a report on the Lilly Endowment Comprehensive Counseling Initiative Grant application. I think Mrs. Mills is going to share that with us tonight. psychologist John Eckhoff, Megan Wiltz, our special education director, our counselors, and community members also. And we have been working together and meeting and writing this grant. Um, and this is for our a counseling uh, uh, grant. And a grant. Uh, this, what I have given the board is the grant pro uh, proposal budget that will be submitted. And you can see the things that we are uh, working on and just going down through it. A national clearinghouse, that's a data warehouse, so we can track our data. And um, the next, where it says second step K-8, that's a, a program, a counseling program that would go through K through eight and be um, very consistent with state and national standards. And then um, you can see the cost that that runs, um, how much that would, those things would cost us over the next four years, and that's what we are proposing in the grant. 
And then for personal, we have, um, where we're wanting to have another Bowen certified counselor to help out um, with our counseling service. And then you'll see a school counselor stipend on that. And that um, stipend is put in <coughs> for school counselors because not only are they their counselors, but they also wear the hat of testing coordinators in each building. Um, as my helpers for st uh, testing coordinator, and they do a lot of work that takes up time during ISTEP, BCAs, all that kind of <coughs> testing. And we're hoping that by giving them a stipend, we can have them work a little bit, um, not during the school day, but after getting some of that testing material ready, so we can put them more into the uh, back into that counseling role. Um, and your professional development. Um, we have Ross Green and Derek Peterson training, and we've already reserved um, a professional from Ross Green's associate, association to come and speak with our um, staff on August 3rd during our first professional development day at um, the middle school. And the staff also then will be doing a book study by Ross Green um, for, that, for the next school year. That's a whole corporation event. A book study and then also that training and we were able to bring um, an associate of his in for that training and then Derek Peterson training is another um, gentleman that we'd like to get in if we would get this grant um, student support um, with this grant we're looking at it we would get an after-school activity bus that would run two nights a week and get those kids a chance to um, get tutoring or get some counseling after school and the parents don't have to bring them back. Um, they can stay after school and then we would take them home on an activities bus. Also, we're looking at bumping up our mentor program within our corporation, um, doing mentoring with business um, uh, people. And um, what is budgeted is here is for some celebrations during the school year. The miscellaneous, um, with that mentor program, they do have to have background checks, so we thought we would budget into our um, grant proposal that we would pay for the mentor's background checks and then any printing and moder uh, mentoring supplies there. So this is the budget and this is what we're thinking about. Uh, well, this is what we are going to do if we get um, our Lilly grant. We submitted this week. We do not find out about the grant until sometime in October. So we have a long, long way. It is a competitive grant. This is a competitive grant, yes. So we are one grant? Just um, no, I think they give out several. Several. I, I don't know the percentage of what they give out. Do you, Aaron? On, I think it just depends on what. On how many schools are going to Yeah. I think they set aside like $20 million. It's, it's a dollar wow. now, so there's not really a no. amount of schools. Yeah. So we're not real sure. So it is competitive, and I do know local schools around us are actually going for this too. So we've worked very hard on this, and um, we've had it reviewed by a couple different, um, by CELL is the group that we had hired when we got our first round of the grant, and then um, also um, Stephanie Overby um, from the Community Foundation has viewed, uh, is reviewing our grant. She's on our committee. So. Thank you for all your work. Yeah, yeah. We You're appreciate welcome. all the extra. Aaron, too. He was on there. So. John, John, John Eckhoff. A, a trooper with this. Yes, he has. He's the one that He's kind been. of overseeing it and mm -hmm. kind of put the package together after we submitted our portions of writing it. Yeah. He's been He's been the, He's been the lead, definitely. Awesome. Been great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. talk to you about a uh, one, one device protection plan at the high school and that he's here tonight to present that. Appreciate the time here this, this evening. Um, you know this is the high school's year for one to one refresh so with that we've been reviewing all of our, our components of that one to one. One of which was our insurance program where we pro uh, um, provided the opportunity for students to purchase insurance to protect their device. We looked at that, how can we do that better? One of the things that we felt like we could do is that we could um, develop a, a self-maintaining program 
uh, to be able to, to help maintain our equipment uh, instead of paying an insurance company to do that. Um, so what we've come up with is this, this one, one device protection plan that will be available to our students to, to purchase to, to help uh, protect their device if you go to the next screen for me. So the purpose of the plan really is simply to, um, the device protection plan is to um, help parents minimize the cost for repairs uh, that are due to accidental damage um, or theft or a, a total loss due to accidental damage. Um, that picture on that screen, um, at the bottom of that screen, was a, a picture of a device that was obviously a total loss. Um, was this one that um, a student brought in to us, she had it in her room, little brother came running into the room and it was covered up and stepped on the stuff and it totally demolished that device. So we're trying to help protect against this type of damage to, to the devices for our parents. Um, so what I want to do is talk about what is covered. And first of all, um, accidental damages, things that are dropped um, because you know they're walking down the hallway and it slipped out of their hand, um, walking down a set of stairs, they fell and got broken, um, and they fell out of their locker, those types of things are the accidental damages. And those will be covered on a prorated schedule, which we'll talk about in a minute. The other thing that we're going to cover is theft or total loss. Um, if a device is stolen and a police report is generated, then um, we will um, cover that, um, help cover the cost of repair or replacement. Um, and then the um, total loss, if, if the, there's accidental damage like that one that you saw, um, we will do a one-time claim with them as well uh, to help cover that accidental total loss. So um, there's three pictures again of devices that we're seeing Right now, the one on the, um, I know they're hard to see, but the one that's all the way on the left is an example of a screen at the middle school where a student grabbed it by the screen and picked it up, and you can see a black circle. There's a thumb, that's where his thumb was at when he picked it up. Um, that cracked the screen. Um, the next one is a power button the kids take and they push the power button down too hard. You know, you just have to push the power button you know, a little bit, and they're pressing really hard. They, you know, ready to leave class, they want to go and they press and hold that button down too hard and it's either cracking a button or we've had a couple cases where it's actually cracked the system board and the system board's need to be replaced. Um, and then the final one is again a total loss. So accidental damage, how we're going to cover that. The first accidental damage claim that a student comes to us with 100% cover. Okay? We will take care of the complete repair of the device. If it's a second claim, if they come to us with a second claim, then we will cover 100% less the $25 deductible. And if they come with a third claim, it's going to be covered 100% less a $50 deductible. Um, anything beyond that third claim, the student or parent will be 100% um, responsible for the okay. um, What we've seen is like that screen that you saw in the previous on um, a screen break like that, the cost of that is about $125 uh, for us to, to repair that parts um, and bench time. So um, we're going to be able to take and save that parent you know, a significant amount of money um, by doing this. So if you go to the next screen for me, our total loss and, or, and theft plan, again, under the plan will be allowed a one-time claim for theft or for total loss due to accidental damage. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to share the responsibility at 50% um, under this plan. So if a student um, gets a device stolen, they bring us a police report, um, they will cover 50% of the replacement cost. We'll take care of 50% of the replacement cost. Um, same thing with uh, a total loss due to accidental damage. Um, that one that you saw on that first screen, that, that first photo you saw, we would share the cost of that um, as long as it's accidental damage. We're going to um, do that. The cost of the current replacement device is five, to, for me to go out and buy one replacement device is about $525 on this device. So we're going to share that cost at 50%. So um, the student would be responsible for $262.50 and we would take up another half of that. So, okay. 
The next question that we've heard a lot of is, is the plan required? No, we can't require the student to participate in the plan, but we are certainly going to urge them to participate because um, the difference in the cost um, between you know, the, the cost of the plan and what it costs to, to actually do a repair is, is significant. Um, and so what happens if I choose not to participate? Choose not to participate, you're 100% <coughs> responsible for any of the damage that happens to the device. So, um, which includes you know, the cost of the parts, um, the tech time on the bench, and uh, um, the shipping uh, to get that device, or to get those parts in and, and taken care of. So, um, so the next question is then, what is the cost of the plan? Um, in, our, in our previous plan, it was costing our students about $51 a year to participate in the insurance plan. Um, we are going to be doing that for $35 a year, um, which is a, a nice saving over the course of four years. Um, $35 a year uh, versus $51, you're going to save quite a bit of money. Um, if a student is eligible for free and reduced lunch, we are going to decrease that to a $25 per year. So that, that's what our claim is going to cost us. So at this point, that, that's our plan in a nutshell. Do you have any questions for me? That, that's good. Thank you. Keith, is that, um, if they lose one or get stolen or something, it, is that just a one-time period for the four years? Or they lose it. Per year? Yeah. If, if they just lose it and they don't have a, um, client, uh, a report from the police department that it was stolen, it's not covered. Right. They're responsible for that. That's being careless. Right. So right. They, but if there's a report. But if there's a police report that has been stolen, it's one. We'll do that one time. One, one time. time. So if it happens again next year. If it happens again, you leave it where it can get stolen again. You're responsible. Okay. For it. That yes, sir. Good. Okay. Okay. That was good. Good. Okay. Thank you. device uh, protection plan for the one-to-one -one at the high school. Uh, does anybody have any more comments on it or we get to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, Stan makes a motion. I'll second that. And Adam accepts, seconds it. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. Aye. Uh, no. It's good to go. Thank you, gentlemen. The uh, next item that I would bring to you would be the uh, Last month, uh, we brought through several handbooks, teacher, uh, substitute teacher handbooks, athletic staff student handbooks for each of the schools. Those were presented to you. Um, you've had some time to look those over. Uh, bring those back to you tonight for approval. Do we have any questions about the handbooks that was presented? If not, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve all the handbooks. Brian makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Uh, Aaron seconds that. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Good to go there. That's all with the old business. On to the new business. Accept donation from the Beaver Dam United Methodist Church. The Beaver Dam United Methodist Church uh, has made a donation of $500 to school corporation to be used to purchase food for typically valid boomerang backpacks. So okay. obviously I'd like to thank uh, the church for that donation and we need the board to uh, accept that. Uh, do I have a motion to accept? I'll make that motion. Stan makes the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Brian seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Nays. We're good to accept that donation. Thank you. Except Valley Hometown Grant for T's Boutique. Right, the uh, Valley Hometown Fund awarded Tiffany Valley High School T's Boutique $950 to be used to purchase fixtures for the boutique. And uh, we'd ask the board to, to go ahead and approve that donation as well. Awesome. Do I have a motion to accept the T's Boutique Grant? Well, I'll make that motion. Adam makes motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Aaron seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Aye
I would uh, also, if you have not had a chance to stop in high school and see that, you need to do that. I've watched that on video. Yeah, yeah if you've seen so the videos, the kids so did a great job on it. Really, really awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so awesome. I'm not a big boutique guy, but uh, <laughs> for the boutiques I've seen, it looks really nice. Yeah, really, yeah. The clothing that's available for the students, it's, uh, it's pretty nice stuff. It's great. What are you shaking your head for, Mr. Kent? Murphy's down there saying something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I do ignore him. Yeah, that's what you said. Thank you. <laughs> On to number three, approval early intervention grant for Akron Elementary and Mentone Elementary. Yeah, the, both of those schools were awarded a, an early intervention grant by the Indiana Department of Education. It's uh, $8,658.33 and will be used to purchase online reading data management system, books, professional development to update our teachers, readers, workshop. I know Mrs. Mills worked on that, and uh, thank you to her and Mr. Downs for putting that together. Awesome. So we ask you to, to recommend that. Do I have a motion to accept the intervention grant for Akron and Mentone Elementaries? I'll make that motion to accept it. Right. Make that motion. Do I have a second? Stay in seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Number four, approval of the science textbook adoption. And Mr. Brown, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, well, when we look at uh, the mission of our school corporation, uh, being student success through leadership, literacy, and the development of character, we really feel like we've, uh, we've brought uh, an adoption here with our science curriculum that, that fits that uh, very well. With the Project Lead the Way curriculum that we're going to have at uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, that will dovetail nicely into what we've got going on at the middle school and the high school. So now we can really look at our school corporation K-12 to and utilizing Project Lead the Way. Uh, the literacy aspect of what we're bringing to the table uh, really also um, coincides with our social studies, what we do with uh, social studies. and. We'll also purchase level readers from various companies such as Benchmark, Scholastic, National Geographic, and, and Discovery. Uh, at the middle school, we're, we're going to be using uh, Glen, Glencoe, McGraw-Hill, and that's also going to be used at the high school, along with the anatomy class, we'll be using GW Publishing. So um, our science teachers did an excellent job vetting these different companies, and um, I bring this forward for your approval. Deal. Do I have a motion to accept the science textbook adoption? Todd, I'll make that motion. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I second that. Brian seconds it. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Number five, approve revisions to the TVMS master schedule. Mr. Backus uh, is here tonight to present that uh, to the board. Is a link to that. I do. Keep it pretty brief. Um, a couple things at the middle school next year that we want to take a look at. Um, as we continue the improvement process, we're always looking at schedule class options, ways we can provide interventions for kids that are struggling and in need of remediation. And so, if we go to the next page, Brad. Um, sort of our, our scheduling needs that we came up with in our school improvement team. We want to balance our class sizes a little better. Um, with specialized classes, we could have one class period with 25 kids in it, and the next one with 12, depending on you know where those periods are locked in. So we want to try to spread that out a little better with class sizes. Our encore classes right now do a nine week, nine week, 18 week with three grade levels, and so we'd like to balance that 12, 12, 12. Um, we want to increase our special education support in our general education classrooms. We'd like to get band choir, our remediation labs, our double block kids study hall time. Right now, our current schedule, all of those classes are pulled from study hall, so those kids don't get study hall to be able to get those services. So adding a tier two intervention flexibility, we'll talk about that last piece. Um, we want to minimize advanced class tracking. That doesn't mean we want to take away advanced classes for our kids, but it means that we want to try to not have one group of kids be tracked with each other for seven full periods a day. We want to try to blend that up so that they get experiences with other kids. And then we run a Viking time, which is a club time. 
um, in an academic recovery time once a week. We want to take some uh, take a look at how we can adjust that. So if you go to the next one, Brett. Um, this is a pretty detailed look at <coughs> trimester model. And so we're asking the board to allow us to do trimesters, 12 weeks, 12 weeks, 12 weeks, primarily for our encore classes. That's our related arts. It is not necessarily going to change anything with our core academics other than it'll extend the grading periods a little bit. We do not at the middle school need to have the corporation change parent-teacher conference dates or any of those things to be able to do this. But what this schedule is going to let us do is it's going to let us take our six related arts classes, computers, project lead the way, art, home ec, and then we have two PE sections and it's going to let us give two of those each 12 weeks each grade, grade level kids. So this way every kid will be able to experience all six of those related art classes for 12 weeks over the course of the year. So kids that would like to do band and choir will actually get to substitute band and choir in for one of those related arts choices over the course of the year rather than having to pull them out of study hall and then losing that opportunity. So if you go to the next this, our proposed schedule, we're looking at a seven period day rather than an eight period day, and we want to move the study halls into homeroom um, with teachers, and then we're going to repurpose the parish staff into helping us out with additional special ed support. But we feel by putting study hall in homeroom with the teachers, every kid's going to have an opportunity to have a teacher as a mentor to work with them, to help keep assignments caught up, to help with instruction. We're also going to pull our special education resource study hall period into resource one period a day rather than having that spread out over the day so that we can work within the classrooms the rest of the day to support those kids. We're going to do our tier two instruction here so we're going to pull labs, remediation, all those things out of this homeroom time rather than out of um, the traditional study hall piece so that way every kid has study time and every kid has access to tier two intervention. Okay. So basically the green highlighted stuff is everything that this particular schedule shift is going to address. Red is not addressed. So we with with these scheduled changes and there's quite a bit more nuances to it we could spend a lot of time talking about, but we've kind of shared some of those things already. And, and the bottom line is we want to be able to provide better support for our kids that are struggling. We want to better balance our classes and better balance the opportunities kids have to experience those related arts classes and we feel like this is going to give us that opportunity. So, any questions? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the middle school master schedule as mentioned? I'll make that motion to approve the middle school master schedule. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? Second that. Adam seconds that. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. Aye. The uh, ayes have it. On to a presentation from Scott Sager of RTC. Thank you very much. I am Scott Sager from RTC. I know some of you. I don't know all of you. I have filmed all of you, I think, at one point or another. Uh, congratulations to the new board members that I've yet to meet. It was almost a year ago uh, this month that I came in and met with you guys talk to you about the partnership, what we were doing over in Rochester, and how we uh, wanted to kind of embed ourselves and partner with you guys on the video front. I can tell you that uh, in 2016, let me back up, a standard year from 2009 to 2015 for RTC, we were doing about 150 videos. That's with me as a full-timer full in those later years, and then uh, some interns and some part-timers. So that 150 videos consumed an entire year and entire staff. Last year, in partnership with Argus, Cast in Rochester, and Tippecanoe Valley School Systems, we put out over 800 videos. I didn't sleep much, but we got it done. It couldn't have been done without, first of all, coming to this board and having you welcome us in. Secondly, it couldn't have been done without the excellent work of students like your Val Victoria, who were lead I, we're losing here in a few weeks. I was hoping he would maybe, you know, fail a class or so and had to stay on for a year. But there's still time. He, yeah, he tells me it's impossible. He's done so well. So uh, that's what we like. We like the students that are passionate about this. We love the students who get the good grades. 
And you know, uh, the old adage is if you want something done, ask someone with a busy schedule. And I think that's what tied in very well with Jared and some of the others here. You need to know from an outsider coming in that you've got some fantastic students over here at the New Valley. And I'm I, especially, I deal with the high schoolers, but uh, we've filmed and dealt with a lot of the young students um, in some of our filming, as well as your teachers. Um, you know, I can't necessarily play favorites having the four schools, uh, but I will tell you, you've got some great, great people here. People that motivate people um, and their students to be educated. And, uh, you know, I feel that vibe and kudos to you, I guess I would say, as the outsider looking in. A couple of things um, of note. Um, last year we did 135, excuse me, videos from Tiffany New Valley. We could have done more. There were programs that Mrs. Mills had. There were programs that you had over at Mentone. There were programs happening in middle school which you couldn't get to. We have built ourselves up now that I have a support team of three plus a technician, so four underneath of me trying to capture this, as well as students. I can tell you that going into January, I still had about 40 students working for me at the four schools. These are students that we do provide a stipend to for doing that work. Um, it's not a million dollars, you know, they're going to make $25 to come and film this tonight. Uh, first of all, it's, it's great experience, it shows the responsibility, we just want to make sure that they get a little something and um, it's worked out very well. I think you've enjoyed it? Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Unsolicited right there. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been paid yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for yeah. <laughs> But the kids have had a lot of fun, but there's a, a communication, I think, is something that we all need to work on together. Um, in coordinating, hey, we've got a neat event going on with our project Lead the Way. Uh, hey, we've got a neat thing with robotics. This has been a long time coming for me to have a crew underneath of me so that we can expand our bandwidth and get to more events. Um, and to have the students embedded in your schools. I'll give you an example. Caston has pulled students out, SVTs, student video technicians, out of class to come over and film a project or a presentation or a convocation happening. Um, they called me and asked me permission. I thought that was funny. I said, I think you need to call your superintendent or, or talk to your principals. But they, they found that balance. There is a balance there. I'll let you guys determine that balance. I won't dictate that. But we do want that information. We want the calls. Um, you had your hometown grant making. And I caught that in the paper after the fact and I was kicking myself because that's something that we had a lot of response from last year when we did film that. And so we want to make sure that that communication is there. Now, RTC, as you know, is basically a telephone, internet, and cable company. So what I do for a living isn't necessarily what's feeding everybody at RTC. But we're getting to a point where we're spending enough money that we are now getting into the advertising side of this so that we can cover our costs. I can tell you I'm still a long way from covering my costs. And that's a goal for us. Um, again, it's not necessarily um, important for us to make all of our profits off of the video department. But if we can do a little bit more to cover our costs. So let folks know that we are offering, this isn't the whole point of this, was to solicit advertising. I want folks to know it's available. Um, and let me see here, a couple of things. Um, the SVT program, we required not only the students, but we also had Scott Smith, your assistant, uh, Athletic Director at the New Valley assist us this past year. He's going to no longer do that after graduation with his schedule and his busy workload. We could use another proxy, uh, whether that's Aaron, whether that's anyone in uh, the schools, really looking to rekindle something that I think is lost at a lot of our schools, um, and that is the video club, if you will. And we're happy to work with that video club and work with these kids. Um, for those of you that don't know, we, um, back in August, we brought $5,000 worth of gear in. It was these cameras, it was these tripods, it was the bags, it was the batteries, it was the et cetera. We've tried to build from there. So right now you have six cameras in-house, six tripods in-house. We just finished out what we call a live kit. That's a laptop with some capture cards and it's completely pre-programmed by our folks at RTC where your kids can broadcast anything live as long as they've got an internet connection. So it could be a football game, it could be an academic contest, it could be this meeting right here, but we're giving them that capacity. And that actually came from your students who wanted to do daily announcements. So they figured out a way to do the daily announcements and we came in as I got my new budget in January and said we need to support that, let's get them a live kit, let's get them started. So we're ready to release that um, as well as another camera 
this camera you see up here is actually mine. That's for advertising more than anything, but Jared's typically using those cameras over in this, the corner. Now, being a uh, video guy from way back, I will tell you that this camera here is a $5,000 camera. That camera over there is still, even though it's small, is a uh, $900 camera, eight to $900 camera. They both provide excellent quality imagery. This one has bells and whistles that your average student isn't going to know how to utilize. Jared's at a point where, as we went through that latter half of his senior year, he could have used a more robust machine. So we're uh, in the process of vetting some of those cameras. So I guess the point here is, is that we're just now at a point where I wanted to be almost a decade ago. And now that we're here, we want to continue to say thank you. And we want to continue to um, make sure that we're promoting this all the way down at the elementary level, kind of a feeder program, if you will, to help you guys capture everything you're doing. The Rochester is a good example of a place where uh, we were approached by their booster club for their athletics. and said, yeah, it's a little weak right now. Fine. We put together a 30-second commercial that we air during our productions as well as on our cable network that um, directs folks to become members of the booster club. Definitely something we're happy to do for Tippecanoe Valley. We've been recently approached by another school that wants us to actually do some promotions, not of the booster club per se, but of athletics in general. Their numbers are down for some of their programs. Their numbers are down for uh, fan support at some of their programs. So we're trying to hype it up. Again, this is all at no cost to them. This is part of our partnership with you. One of the things that's important to know is that if you put a dot in the middle of Rochester, Indiana, and go 40 miles in all directions, we've had cameras there this past year. We had, I'll give you an example, Argus taking on Oregon Davis. We had more people watching from the Oregon Davis area than from Argus. Pretty rare, but our name is getting out there. So one of the things we're working on with Rochester is to actually put a commercial together for the school and air that so that anybody who's watching in that 40 mile radius who wants to transfer over is able to, you know, at least it's that marketing piece that I know a lot of the schools are wanting. So that's something I would encourage uh, you guys to work with us on, tell us, lead the way, work with Aaron what we need so that uh, we can make that and again, highlight all the great things you're doing here at Tippecanoe New Valley so that uh, more folks will be a part of it. So it's kind of my spiel, nothing to sell, just a lot of praise and a lot of thanks. And uh, I think we're just getting started. I really do. I look forward to a great future with this. And I'll open it up for any questions anyone might have for me. Scott, you talked about the, um, the package of um, being able to film things live. Mm -hmm. So what would, uh, what platform would people use to, to view that? To view that, right now they would go straight to our website. And they can view that at rtc4.com, and they can view that for free at no problem. So, so if there are four different games going on at the same time, yes, then all four games will be on RTC. Yes, sir. Okay. And right now, what we've done is, let's say we've got one at each of our schools. All four of those are going up the same day at the same time, and you can bounce around to which one you wanted to watch. Okay. So we can feed that with multiple live feeds. In fact, as I preview what's coming up, graduation always a always a um, big one this time of year. Tipping New Valley, Caston, Argus. You're all graduating your students the same day at the same time. So, I got my work cut out for me. But, in this past year we've made improvements so that I am capable of going live with all three of those events at the same time. Uh, so, you know, and I still have to say this, I've been dealing with it for, as I say, a decade. I can't guarantee it. The internet's going to break down somewhere along the way, or something's going to go wrong. I know that. Um, as good as I am at my job, there are still things out of my control. I will tell you, however, last year we showed up to go live here, and we had our main piece of equipment break down on us as we plugged it in. And I will tell you that we figured it out, and you had a live feed of your graduation on the air last night, so, or I mean last year. So we uh, we do our best, and we, you know. I'm expecting to have four live graduations on that Sunday. Other questions? Thank you all. Seriously, thank you. Your time. Thank I appreciate you. all you appreciate your partnerships. Uh, yeah. My pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, any other? Uh, we'll go to uh, our student representatives. How was prom and how's things going on? Prom? Oh, 
well, everything's coming to you know, a bittersweet end, of course, but um, right now we've got finals coming up. I believe they start next Friday, if I'm correct. Um, spring sports, you know, we've got sectionals coming up for track, you know, softball, everything like that. Um, last week we just had Teacher Appreciation Week, and for that, Student Council hosted a cookout on Friday, I believe it was, last Friday, and had every, all the staff members and teachers and stuff come down, and they had a lunch and everything, and it went well. Um, we also had each day, uh, each, all the students in Student Council wrote uh, handwritten letters to all the teachers and staff members for each day of the week, just to show a little appreciation. and. Um, I think the teachers really appreciate our appreciation, <laughs> so that was good. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got. So, senior trip to DC was phenomenal. Um, great experience. I I can't say how how amazing it was. We got to cram so much into one day that uh, there was no way I remembered all the names. I just know that. Uh, it, there was a lot of really cool stuff to see out there, so we thank you for um, allowing us to do that. Um, another senior trip, um, we have the Kings Island trip coming up Friday, and uh, we'll be going to Kings Island and hopefully riding some roller coasters. Um, a lot of my fellow seniors are excited for graduation. It's coming a lot for them than I ever thought it would. Um, so yeah, everything's going great. And, uh, Everybody's ready to get them done. Good deal. Good deal. Well, I believe that's all. We're adjourned for this evening. Thanks for coming.